Er, hello, everybody. Craig Lane, Health Alchemy, with our little community dinner potluck. How does cleansing affect immunity? And we got a little crowd here, and um, we'll record this. So we're going to run into a screen share. Because we're starting a little late, but you virtual people watching will see the first thing you'll see is swim life's waters well. Um, I'm not going to do a little plug. So this is Health Alchemy. My name is Craig Lane. Been in practice 20 years, full time. And we have a group cleanse going, which I've been running for about 10 years. I lead a group cleanse. And you might ask yourself, why does he lead a group cleanse? Every season, for that matter. Yeah. Well, group process generally holds people more accountable. And those of us that have been in school know that you're more likely to get your homework done if you're being held accountable for it. You're more likely to improve your health if others are holding you accountable for the higher values that you need to have. Um, as I say in my practice, most people's values are this big in their health, and my values go up to the ceiling. So I eat healthy, great. By most people's standards, you do eat healthy, but these are pathetically low. And if you have low values, then you'll have a low value of life, and you'll have a low experience of life. So I'm here to say in the group setting, we have people with higher values of health, and that raises other people up. Instead of trying to take each other down into the quicksand of duality, we bring each other up into the light. That's why we lead group cleanses. And the other reason is, is because generally we tend to accumulate toxins. And so if you want to hear about the five toxicities of your metabolic waste, your microbial waste, your heavy metal waste, your radiation damaged tissue waste, and your chemical waste that your liver has to deal with all day, every day, 365, 24 seven, then you might want to watch the last talk prior to this where I talk about that. And generally we can't keep up. So imagine you're a guy like the liver standing behind a counter and you're, it's a take a number system. And those are all the toxins that the poor guy's got to deal with. So if you have too many people spilling out the door, in my world, I call those symptoms. Your liver can't keep up, your cells can't keep up, your kidneys can't keep up, you can't drain it out fast enough. So when we're cleansing, we're increasing foundations three and four in my world. So you have to have a strong foundation to a house to live properly. And that's the basis of what we're talking about here tonight is the, how does the foundations of health fight in with cleansing, time with immunity? So the main, the main takeaway, if you just watch the first few minutes here, is that if you're clean on the inside and you're, you're, all, you're doing cleansing, you're clearing sludge, you're clearing waste, you're clearing mucus, you're clearing old fat, then generally there's less fog bank for your inner cops to deal with. And as everybody knows, if you have a cop in a fog bank trying to blow up a criminal, it's going to be a lot more difficult in a fog bank than a clear sky. And that's the way it works in the body. When you have congestion and toxicity and inflammation, and generally it's like having a fog bank and your poor immune cells are going, whoa, where are you? Think he's over there. And you have collateral damage because the immune system uses gnarly, gnarly stuff, like oxygens and all kinds of stuff. So you don't want your immune cells going nuts. That's called autoimmunity, where they go crazy and start killing your own cells and tissues. That's why I lead group cleanses in a nutshell. It's imperative to me that I held myself to a higher value, sit with other people that hold me to a higher standard, and that we all share and love and care for each other. Because that's what heals the world is love. I don't care how much information you present to somebody. You, know, you, gotta, you gotta inspire and love. So that's what this is about. Swim life's waters well. And um, the other thing I'm gonna plug here is my alchemical clinical training group. We have a few people in, we're doing some dress rehearsals. It's gonna be run by modules. It's a 200 hour program for $2,000. If you wanna trade or barter, that is awesome also. There's an introduction um, part of it. There's seeing life as process, module one. And I'll bounce back and forth a little bit here. So we talk about nutritional patterns and review of diet and seeing life as process, learning to live and identify patterns. Uh, lost the page, that was not good. Where'd that page go? Then the module two is health assessment. And that's where we're gonna have a video series on that. How to use the eye, the white of the eye, the iris, the tongue, lab work, pulses, interview. That's how to do proper health assessment. Module three is herbal medicine and nutrition. Um, so herbal nutrition is an imperative these days. The photo you see there is the hops plant. A lot of people drink beer because they really want hops. Hops is really the energy most people are craving. It's very sedating. It's very calming. It cures uh, SIBO and gut problems. It wipes out bad bacteria. It stops intestinal spasms. You can't believe how amazing hops is. I use it for female hot flashes and menopause. It's, it's, a, it's power packed. Estrogen. Okay. Foundation four is anatomy and physiology from a different angle. Um, I'll go in just a tiny second into that. This is the master page. Um, so we're going to go into another way of seeing the body. 
and check this out. We're gonna talk about digestion, the central nervous system in the brain, the hormonal axis, the urinary system, the lymphatic system, the portal veins, which no one talks about. The main thing you're gonna get at working with me is I'm gonna talk about the lymphatic system and the portal circulation. Nobody talks about those two things and they're central to a couple of main issues in people. Um, we're gonna talk about the respiratory system and the heart, connective tissue, everything, all the way down to cells in that particular module. Uh, we're gonna do chemistry as a process and as frequency translation. Uh, that's a whole crazy module six where we're gonna see chemistry from another angle. It's actually gonna be fun. And as the joke says on the website, I told the chemistry joke, there was no reaction. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Knee slapper. Knee slapper. And then we have uh, cooking and food herb preparation module. Speaks for itself. Then we have learning how the body, mind, and spirit and health all fit together. And that little picture there is uh, called confronting the self with all of its strange uh, aspects. And we have a Western science, Eastern Western science integration with traditional health systems module and a learning the body of the earth module, which is like permaculture and soil health. That's what a nutritionist in my world learns. You learn from the soil, how to prepare food, and you become a great nutritionist. That's what the program's about. So we'll move on to the next. So ways to use the cleanse. Um, tonight's theme for the personal cleansers and people that wanna learn about health is how do I slow down and speed up cleansing? So this first page here, this is on the cleanse cover master sheet, which is on my website. It's on the summer deep cleanse page. So if you go to cleansing purification, click the summer deep cleansing tab, you'll see I do some inner work. You can scroll down and the, the page I'm showing you, thanks to my good friend, Brian Canary, is I learned how to embed a Google sheet. So thank you, Brian Canary. I have an embedded Google sheet right there for anybody to look at. Um, on the website. So the easiest thing to do if you want to do an easy cleanse, you slow down your cleansing, is just follow the basic food chart that I have. And it's really wide actually. We're trying to get carbohydrates out of people's life more than protein and fat. And yes, you can eat protein and fat and cleanse. But it's about typing ourselves and that's part of my assessment system. If you're a protein ketogenic blood type O, you're not going to do well cleansing on carbohydrates, guaranteed. And if you're a blood type A, carbohydrate type, you're definitely not going to do well trying to cleanse on uh, raw meat and fat. So um, I'm coming at this from a personal attention. There's, a, there's general cleansing stuff, and we're going to go over that right now. This little whiteboard thing. Generally, I don't know if this is even going to work for you guys to see this. So I have a page with this. Generally, more cleansing is raw. Generally, less cleansing is cooked food. Generally, Here's this teeter-totter on the bottom here. Here's a teeter-totter, and sodium and potassium are on this teeter-totter. Generally, anybody that's worked with salt knows that if you add enough salt to meat, what happens to it? It turns tough. So too much sodium is gonna stop your cleansing. Too much potassium, or potassium will speed it up. So what are your potassium-rich foods? Fruits and vegetables. What are your sodium-rich foods? All your acid-forming foods are higher in sodium. Grains, beans, nuts, seeds, meat, cheese, dairy. They're all tend to lean more, the ratio of sodium potassium leans more on those foods. Your potassium rich foods tend to have a lot less sodium. Like the highest potassium rich foods generally are avocado, banana, but really the nightshades, tomato is really skyrocket potassium relative to sodium, potatoes too. And that the Orientals um, via the macrobiotic people had a ratio of sodium potassium. They used to say it was ideal in the human body and that was seven parts potassium to one part sodium. The uh, George Sosawa and some of the old macrobiotics to really study this stuff. And it was amazing to me. So the modern person is more like one to four. Four parts potassium, one part sodium. Just like the omega-3, omega-6 ratio in modern humans is all off. We have too much omega-6 relative to omega-3, and that puts us in an inflammatory pattern. So to increase cleansing, eat more potassium-rich foods. And you can look that up in the web if you want. Uh, more liquids is more cleansing, more solids is less cleansing in general. Um, so if I really want to cleanse my bowels out, I'll have a big five cups of raw kale and then, you know, chew the heck out of it. And then, you know, it's like a dietary bowel explosion, you know, next day. Um, cause I don't do well with kale. And so, um, but if I want to clean my bowels out, it's quite effective. Um, so generally the kale juice and for me, it would be less cleansing than probably kale raw as a solid. 
but generally when you do a smoothie and a lot of people they generally cleanse more when they're just doing liquids and generally not cleansing as much when they're doing solid and it's because you're not working as hard as your digestive system see your digestive system your body puts energy into digestion just like if you're in high finance you have to have money to make money in the financial markets so the more money you have the more you can make so if you have a lot of vitality then the body invests that vitality to digest food to get energy and resources back so when you do liquid diet your body is putting a lot less energy into digestion and you can get a lot more payoff out of it next week's cleanse is going to be liquid dinner so for those coming next week bring your soup your stew, your pureed carrot soup, your juice, your smoothie, I don't care, it can be anything liquefied. Well, maybe not anything. Uh, that's a laugh out loud. We've got the old primal diet, Ajinu guy who, uh, you know, he would liquefy even hamburger and meat and eat it raw, and, uh, but that's not gonna be for most people. I won't do a liquid raw liver juice like they do with the Gershon diet too back in the olden day. They'd feed him wheatgrass juice and coffee enemas and liver juice, yum, yum. yummy diet. A liver juice. I know, but before you also said yesterday it was Gershon juice. I don't know if Gershon was doing it, but I would do it because it's mm -hmm. just so. There's one of your plants, sleeper plant for uh, immunity is uh, nasturtium, raw nasturtium juice, nasturtium tea. It's uh, it wipes out bugs. I mean, it just the, the pica, the spice increases your glutathione because of the thiols and all your onion family. Anything spicy in your mouth like that, the cabbage and the onion family, that's making thiols, which gets made into glutathione. And you know, and um, my friend Michael McAvoy could explain that to all of you much better than I could because I don't like the chemistry pathways. Oh my God, it's too much for me. Okay, let's see what else do I leave off here. We have heat is more cooling than cold. So generally, we do better cleansing in the heat than in the cold. That kind of makes sense, doesn't it? You don't want to be eating on a raw food in an Alaskan winter. Um, you know, sleeping outside in the igloo, you're going to eat probably raw seal meat and do better than eating a raw vegan salad. But you know, that's not for me to say, if it does well for you, then you should do it. But generally, activity in chemistry, everybody knows that life is less active when it's cold. I'm an herbalist, I've been gardening for 25 years. When it's cold out, plants don't grow nearly as fast. The kefir doesn't go nearly as long. The ferments take longer when it's cold. So generally, more activity, more cleansing when it's hot. Now that's not to say, here's the big if, and the qualifying statement is, strong spices slow down detox. So your bell pepper, your, I mean, excuse me, your spicy peppers and your garlics and whatnot. There's a saying about garlic I learned long ago. It's, it's quite funny, actually. Garlic cures all diseases, except the ones it causes. What's the energy of garlic? It's hot and dry. So if you have a hot, dry temperament, garlic's going to aggravate you. Also, if you're kind of naturally high libido, garlic tends to increase desires in libido. The yogis have known that for a long time. You don't do the onion family if you're trying to sit in a temple and be uh, equanimous, you know? You wanna stir up your consciousness, have a bunch of raw onion and garlic juice and then go sit and meditate for an hour. Oh my God, it's not fun, I've done it. Uh, yeah, yeah, so you don't wanna do that. Um, so strong spices slow down liver detox because the body has to spend the time breaking down all the hot compounds, which can, for some people, as you know, if I have a cayenne pepper, I'm sweating bullets for an hour. Literally out my pores in my head, my gets, head gets all red and, and then, you know, the next day I have the bowel movement I don't want to have. The next day I have the bowel movement I don't want to have, which is the burning butthole uh, bowel exactly. movement. And boy, that ain't no fun. So my body doesn't break that down well. And um, so I tell my cleansers, you can do, you know, ginger, a little bit of garlic, but try to avoid the spicy hot jalapenos and whatnot while you're cleansing. Um, they're, they're appropriate potentially in a real hot climate. Like today was a real hot day, so. Peppers make you sweat, so there's appropriateness there to get the, you know, some of the heat out of your body. Sauna effect. Sauna effect, yeah. Right, right. Um, and finally, heat, cold, vitality. We're gonna talk about my vitality check in a minute. So if you have vitality, you'll be able to cleanse. If you don't have vitality, you won't cleanse. And the simple metaphor is, I like using a simple metaphor because to me, cells are individual people in my body. There's a live blood cell analysis lady, uh, Ingrid Neyman, that did live blood cell analysis or dark field microscopy for 30 years, and here's her quote. After 30 years of doing this, I'm convinced individual cells have individual personalities. So, if you're tired, do you wanna clean up your room? No, you don't. Get over it, don't lie. When you're tired, you don't wanna do anything. So if your cells are tired, do they wanna detox well? Are they respirating well? 
No, they're not. So I have people on the cleanse right now, and I have one lady, we're working on sleep, you know, because that's the priority. She's going to have better vitality by getting better sleep than forcing her through cleansing and fasting and, you know, austerities that she doesn't need to do. Because for God's sakes, many of us, you know, my age in their 50s, we've done enough austerities for gosh sakes. You know, so um, the vitality is really important. It helps me determine how deep someone can go. You can also do saliva tests where you take your urine and um, saliva pH. And finally, you can also do a lemon juice tech where you, you suck on a quarter cup of lemon juice for mm -hmm. like 30 seconds, and you swallow it, and then a minute later, you take five pH readings of your saliva. And if they're not extremely alkaline, above 7.2, 7.4, then you know you've got a problem and you shouldn't be cleansing. Why? Because you can't break down the acids that are going to occur when you're cleansing if you can't even break down citric acid in your mouth. The mucus is alkaline. That's why if within 30 seconds you can't make enough alkaline mucus to buffer that citric acid, then you're not going to be making enough alkaline elements to buffer the acids of your cleansing. It's a simple way to do it. That's an old uh, Arise and Shine Richard Anderson technique. So I'll give him credit because I didn't think of it. But I use it when I have to. Uh, so vitality, I measure it in my practice by blood pressure, temperature, and the blood pressure is lying down versus standing up. It's called Dr. Ragland's test, temperature, pulses, and tongue. You could also do it by lab work. If your anabolic markers on your lab work, which is your cholesterol, your triglycerides, your serum protein, your calcium, your minerals, your red and white blood blood cells, if those are all low, you should not be cleansing, especially your red and white blood cells. Because if your Pac-Man are low, how are you going to swallow up all the waste? Right? You need those Pac-Man going around, chomping along on the waste. And so it's really important to understand this. Like a lot of Americans, we're in this doer, 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 doer mode, and we end up sacrificing our nervous system, and we're in sympathetic nerve all day, all day, all day. And guess what, folks? When you're in sympathetic nerve dominance, you ain't making no stomach acid. You ain't making no digestive secretions. You ain't doing no repair in your body. So when people come in for a cleanse with me, sometimes uh, – the most successful cleanse I ever had was this guy 10 years ago, he had an ATM machine, and uh, his cleanse was to sleep as much as possible for three weeks. And when he was done with the cleanse, he did better, he had better markers than all five of his family members who were deep into the cleansing. It was like such a satisfying, he bought a couch for his office, and every spare chance he got, he would go lay on his couch and take a nap. I just love this story. He really was sincere, he really wanted, and he was a lot better at the end of the cleanse, he looked fantastic. Um, so if it's really important to understand, like, you can still cleanse, but you know, if you're tired, you should rest first, you know? If you're going to go for a marathon, rest for a while, and then run the marathon, and then rest again, you know? That's how I used to do yoga when I was a young man, really deficient in energy. I, was do, I would do five postures, be exhausted, lay down in Shavasana for 15 minutes, fall asleep, do five more postures, lay in Shavasana, fall asleep. First time I did an enema, I was in bed all day. I was a pretty toxic young man. And finally... Pollard, vitality, tired, veggie animal. There's a whole veggie animal thing you could talk about. A lot of people, um, there's no doubt that the vegetables, 100% vegetables will be more cleansing than meat. But I need to qualify that for some people. Um, some people, they need to have some of that raw protein because what buffers your pH in your body more than anything else is amino acids. A lot of people think it's fruits and vegetables because they're alkaline. That is not true. That is untrue. That is incorrect. The most important buffering mechanism in your body are your amino acid pool. So if you're a low protein eater, then you're going to have trouble managing your pH in your body, in your pH compartments. You have a stomach pH compartment, you have a small intestine, you have a large intestine, you have a fluid compartment called the plasma, blood, and lymph. They're all different pHs, folks. So when you're talking pH in my world, you'd better qualify it. Oh, acidity generates cancer. No, that's incorrect. You don't want an alkaline stomach, folks. You will never digest protein and minerals. So you need to qualify where your acidity, where you're talking about. And the blood can never be acidic by definition. It's 7.35, 7.45, 24-7. It never varies beyond that. So, and that's slightly alkaline. So tell me, folks, how cancer is connected with acid, you know? We need to talk about that. Cancer is connected with all kinds of other things. You could generalize cancer in some cases, but you could also generalize, in my experience, alkalinity is a big problem, too. All right. So there's this teeter-totter when you're balancing your cleansing. In my cleanse, um, we're ending, uh, I started mine last Saturday, so this is Friday, it's day seven. So I'm ending the first week. And in my three-week cleansing system, the first week is about loosening everything up, rich potassium foods, getting hydration, 
And today it was 95 in Santa Cruz, which is really hot for here. So, you know, hydration was paramount. You have a hard time cleansing when the river's all dried up, i.e. you're, you know, you're hydrate, dehydrated. So um, I believe Monica is going to have a talk on hydration next week. So that'll be part of the, uh, the whole thing. And I have a little presentation on hydration myself because I used to um, lecture at a Bikram studio locally. And I discovered in my research that saturated fats hydrate the cells, especially like butyric acid, folks, butter fat. So it's, for me, if I, I used to go to Bikram and sweat, you know, quarts out, and I would drink one to two quarts of raw milk immediately after the Bikram and feel amazing. And that was me, you know, you got to find your own thing that worked. But all the butter fat in that raw milk really worked for me as a protein type. For you carb types, you would need to find something else. And see the veggie choices here. You see there's a lot of like, oh, amaranth greens, arugula, beets, beet greens, bok choy, burdock, carrots, celery. So if I eat those raw, and see how spinach is on the list? Generally, it's a non-result vegetable in my world. I just had a conversation today about it. I would generally encourage um, Swiss chard and uh, beet greens over spinach because of Royal Lee's work and functional foods and considered spinach a non-functional food because you can never get a result increasing blood values from blood deficiency to higher with spinach, but he could with beet greens. So in his line of product standard process, you see a lot of beet greens, but you see zero spinach. And I know that I get amazing results with this product. So I generally think of spinach now as a pleasure food, a comfort food, a, you know, when it's cooked, there's this nice sliding energy. They call it in Chinese medicine. Spinach has sliding energy. So if you have really dry, hard bowel movements, oh man, spinach is gonna, it's gonna lube you right up. Um, I guess pun intended there. <laughs> Prunes are encouraged the first week, especially if you're low weight. If you're trying to cleanse and you're, uh, whether you're male or female, it doesn't seem to matter. If you're trying to cleanse and you're eating fruit, you're going to have a hard time losing weight. So generally, when you're cleansing and you want to lose weight, you need to keep the fruit out. And if you're cleansing and you're lightweight and you want to keep weight on, then keep the fruit on. You know, have a, wa a whole watermelon, a whole papaya, a whole pineapple, you know, especially on days like today. And you're good if you're low weight. Because your body will make fat out of that and store it. And that's fine. Um, you just don't want to overeat, which kind of offsets all the cleansing. So these are all the special parameters on week one. And then if you look down for the next part, week two. So if you think of week one as you've got these in here, you have this rotten apartment complex. So you have a slumlord apartment complex. What are you going to attract to your slumlord apartment complex? Slumlord kind of people. And so if you have a slumlord intestines full of waste and mucus and congestion, you're going to attract bad bugs. And don't blame nature, as Dr. Natasha Candle McBride said once. She says, don't blame the salmonella for your food poisoning. Blame the fact that you got a rotten, smelly gut attracting pathogens to it. Mm -hmm. And I would tend to agree. I think it's that extreme. But um, generally, look at nature and how nature works. What is fungus's job in nature? Why are there turkey tails growing on those dead trees? They're eating the rotting matter. And so one of my coaches, very brutal macrobiotic coach in 1995, I was that, holy mackerel, 25 years ago, he said, don't blame the bugs for your rot. What? And I was an overeater, so I was terrified by that statement, because I knew I was overeating, and I knew I had rot, because I had body odor, and, you know, it's like, oh my God, this guy's calling me out, you know? And um, I started changing then, and stopped overeating. It took me about 10 years, but it finally happened. And it's one of those things I see in psychology. It's another part of foundation one of nutrition. My first foundation is your chooser. So a lot of us are choosing to overexercise, overeat, oversleep, overmedicate because we don't want to feel. We don't want to feel our trauma, our pain, our past. And then that's how we bypass it. And I know that I was a great bypasser. I overexercised, overslept, and overate. I have a PhD in emotional management. <laughs> emotional trauma management through overeating over sleeping and over oh yeah also over sex with some partners just sex mania uh, there's nothing wrong with that it's free you know stuff that's free yeah you know it's free sex is like it's like free joy you know it's like use it all right let me get myself in trouble in a minute here so i'm gonna move along so week two week one in the cleansing of the apartment complex analogy is for god's sakes kick out the bad tenants Start cleaning up the place. Week two is about cleaning up the place and cleaning out more of the bad guys. You know, you want to get them all evicted and clean up the place. And then week three is about bringing in the good guys. 
Um, so as it says here, week two, clear pathogens allow for quick passage of food with minimal digestive energy being put out. So generally on a three-week cleanse, I encourage a lot of liquids in week two. And I'm going to try. I'm really going to try. But the, when this, for me in Santa Cruz here, it's a vitality issue because I love to surf. And so when I'm cleansing, I have a hard time being a masculine, crowd control kind of guy because there's lots of people surfing. So there's this dance for me of like my plan of fast. It has to be sort of loose because of the surf. Uh, yep, that's right. After 40 years, I'm still an addict. <laughs> Uh, but as you can see, the foods on week two change a little bit. You see dandelion greens, endive, burdock, celery, asparagus, which is not, yeah, it's not in season. So asparagus may not be the best choice. Um, radishes, salad greens, kraut, escarole. We did a uh, radicchio salad last night for food prep night, and oh my God, it was delicious. It was absolutely delicious. So radicchio is in the chicory family. So you have frise, radicchio, escarole. And for people that have bowel problems, those are the vegetables they should be juicing and eating. Why? Because they're bitter. What does bitter do? It stimulates the bile. And so when you get the bitter flavor on your tongue, that's how you increase cleansing. Actually, that's worth a moment's conversation. I don't have a slide for this, but sweet flavor is a tonifying flavor. It doesn't increase cleansing generally. Salty flavor is a building flavor. Generally, it doesn't increase cleansing. Sour flavor generally is a building flavor. It doesn't increase cleansing. What do the three flavors have in common in the Ayurvedic elements? Earth and water. So how do you build a, how do you build a house, adobe brick? Earth and water. That's how you build a body. So if you focus on bitter, you're going to have more cleansing. You focus on spicy, mild spicy, you have better cleansing. You focus on the heavy spices, you're going to stop your cleansing. The two flavors you'd be focusing on is spice, you know, pungents and bitters when you're cleansing. Sweet, salty, sour, you know, you want to control that based on, you know, the Ayurvedics have a good thing with vata, pitta, kapha. You know, if you got a lot of nervous energy, you need to be grounded, then you're going to have to have some heavier foods just to maintain sanity in today's reality. And if you're really heavy and grounded and weighed down, then you might do well with just the, uh, the raw vegetables that are bitter and pungent. And that's why they're here on the food list. That's the point of all that. See, so arugula, so even celery is somewhat um, bitter. Cilantro, collards, watercress, dandelion, endive, escarole, kale, radishes. See, they all share that bitterness, and that's why they're highlighted on the food list. Um, and then I think I have some seed chews. I like to joke around. Spices to focus on. One of these weeks we do a seed chew. It might be cumin seeds. Where you chew on a teaspoon of cumin seeds after you eat. Maybe that's... Let me see if it's in that. Okay. No, miso broth. So next week we'll talk about next week, but... Um, I mean, week three, we'll talk about next week. So I'm going to move along to, you can go to this page on the website and see how it says ways to use our cleanse. And so there's easiest, next level, mid-level. And so the highest level, we'll talk about for a minute. If you're going deeper into cleansing, i.e. fasting, you've got to rest. Don't try and fast and work, especially if you're an empathic type. Please don't. It could be a disaster for your consciousness. Um, if you're doing a liquid diet, then that's generally how I compromise. I might have even raw cream in a, in a juice. I might add raw eggs and raw cream into a juice, and then I can function while um, I'm doing a liquid diet. But if I'm doing just vegetables and a little bit of fruit, I am just a spun out nightmare. So I need to, uh, on work days at least, do some kind of calories. Uh, raw food only will also increase your cleansing. Sitting in silence. So here's my challenge each and every one of you out there. If you've never sat with yourself, Set a timer for five minutes, sit in a chair, and let everything be as it is. Your mind, your body, the world, just let everything be. That's my challenge to you. Can you let everything be as it is for only five minutes, sitting in a chair? I challenged an assistant years ago, and she got so curious about what she saw in those five minutes, she, be, she became um, an insight meditator. With insight meditation almost weekly, twice a week, where she wasn't doing it zero before that. So, you know. Explore yourself. There are many mansions in my father's house, Jesus said. Why don't you explore some of those mansions in the inner world? Sitting in silence increases cleansing. That's my experience. Restorative yoga on fasting days. So if you're doing fasting, have some restorative yoga. You know, yin yoga, where you're not moving around a lot. You're just kind of spending a lot of time in a posture, breathing, being conscious of your body. Do all three levels of the challenges every day. So that's important to understand that I have challenges. Oh, it's not even on here. Sorry, folks. It's not on here right now. 
And enemas and colonics will definitely increase cleansing. Moving along to the next slide. If you won't want to fast, you could try intermittent fasting. It's kind of the, the trendy thing these days. And the harder intermittent fastings are the, the narrower windows. So you might say, I'm going to have one meal would be the most extreme intermittent fasting. I'm going to have one meal at noon. OK, great. The next most extreme would be allow yourself four to six hours where you might have two meals. I'm a meal at noon and a meal at five. Great. And that's where the group process comes into play. If you have someone holding you accountable, like, hey, I got people holding me accountable that love me and care about me. I'm going to stick with my plan. Even though it's uncomfortable, I'm going to do only eat lunch at noon and dinner at five. I prefer the uh, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. window myself because in Chinese medicine, there's a circadian rhythm and the digestive system in their tradition is most active from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. And I have found that to be true because most of the meditators and the um, yogi yogis tend to have breakfast and lunch and skip dinner. And to me, that's a more, if you're not active at night or during the day as much, that's a better program because the food isn't sitting in your stomach all night. And lots of variations on that. A lot of people that don't want to eat before noon, and they do the noon to six. And um, to me, they're shooting themselves in the foot a little bit because the digestion's most active from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. based on the fire element. You know, the sun's rising up, energy's increasing. And, you know, last half of the day, it's dwindling. And the digestive system's based on the earth element in Chinese medicine. All right. Well, intermittent fasting is a, a great way to um, use some cleansing. Um, if you haven't seen this, this is also on the website, um, the basic cleansing rules. Um, I'm not going to go down each one individually because I've already been talking a bit here, but that's available to each and every one of you to say, like, what does it mean to cleanse? And this is just the basics right here. This would be like the basic food chart turned around in negative. It's what we don't want you to do while you're cleansing. And the one that really surprises people is don't heat your oils. Don't fry. Don't fry, don't saute. That comes out of my macrobiotic days because your cell membranes are made of mostly oil and cholesterol. And if you're putting heated oils in your body, those are damaged oils. And if your cell membranes are also the brain of the cell, then you're going to have stupid cells. That's right. The DNA of your cell is not the brain of the cell. It's in the membrane. So um, if you're putting bad fats in your body and you're heating fats, then you're not going to have a good of a cleanse. And um, that's pretty much not negotiable. That's how I started out in macrobiotics with heavy cancer therapy, stage four people. And they were saying, you can't fry anything, not until you're recovered. And the recovery rate was astounding at this macrobiotic institute that I was at. So they had a lot of credibility in my world. And I'm going to stick with that and stick with that. Don't heat oils. Use all the oils you want. Just don't heat them. Have all the coconut oil you want, coconut butter, olives, whatever. Just don't heat it. Put it on the steam of some broccoli and add all the butter you want, raw butter. Add all the coconut oil you want after the fact. Yeah, it's really an important point. And don't eat late, for God's sakes. You know, don't eat at 10 o'clock when you're trying to cleanse. I'm a hypocrite. I just did it last night. I had a salad. I had my escarole salad at 11.30 last night after you left. <laughs> Long after. Uh, it was the munchies, too, I got to admit. I got the munchies. <laughs> I did the munchies with the escarole salad, though, instead. <laughs> uh, thank you. I'm almost done here. Okay, we're going to go to the Standard Process website because there are, they have the largest regenerative farm in North America. It's um, almost 1,000 acres if you include all the farms they own, but they have like 300 to 500 acres. And this is one of the, one of the foods they grow is beets. And there's a little sheet right here that I'm going to share. And it's on the recording, which you can all look at. They have the colors of food and the different therapies that have cut different colors, which is also a macrobiotic and um, Chinese medicine thing. But according to them, green helps support immunity and support gene expression. That's new to me. Green is generally viewed as going to the liver in Chinese medicine. They say help, red helps the heart and blood vessels, supports muscle development, supports the skin. That's exactly what it is in Chinese medicine. The red color goes to the fire element, which is the heart, small intestine, and the blood vessels. White helps support the immune system, a healthy inflammatory response, weight management, and healthy cholesterol. Well, that's fascinating. White in Chinese medicine is part of the metal element, and it goes to the lungs and opens the pores. Um, the metal element does. The white is a whole thing. It just goes to that organ system. Purple supports memory. See, it says can. Can support the gut, support memory, support a healthy heart. Um, I don't have a comment on that one. And then yellow or orange can support the gut, the eyes, the skin, and the immune response. And yellow and orange in Chinese medicine is viewed as also brown, and that's an earth element color, which is the digestive system and the muscles. So pretty, pretty closely lining up there, actually. And this is available 
through the recording. And um, if anybody wants to see this Color of Food booklet, I'd be happy to um, distribute that. And let's see, nobody joined the call, so there's no questions. One other thing, when you're cleansing, I have a couple of laugh out louds here. This little guy that this being is encountering, um, I found this on an alchemy website, I'm searching Google images for alchemy. And I call this confronting the self because this is kind of what I felt like when I started meditating for a while. It's like, what am I dealing with here? And so, um, yeah, from age 25 to 35, it's just what I call a freak show of um, very strange experiences in meditation. Mm -hmm. And um, so confronting the self. And finally, do some inner work. That was what we were talking about when we started. Hope you all have a, oh, wait, let's take the questions here. Do you guys have any questions that would go out to the public? I'm gonna stop the screen share now. Any questions for the public? Mostly the availability to access all your previous um, cleanse videos, the ones from this month and the one from prior the, on your on your website okay, and good. on your YouTube channel. All um, right. Thank you for that. They'll be marked what is current for this month and so that this fills in more compared to the last few uh, videos you've done in August 2020, right? And then right. what are your favorite past ones maybe or other ones that are good foundational learning yeah. for anybody who's tuning in for the first time in August 2020? See, Monica over here is sort of better with the marketing promotion than me. So if you all heard what you said, um, basically what are my, so right here on the, on the, this is my website. You go to my website, healthalchemy.com, go to the more tab, then click on information, then click on foundations. Um, you're going to see my favorite uh, four professionally edited my each of the four foundations is right there on my website. They're embedded YouTube videos Those are four of my favorites and then if you go to my YouTube channel, which is very easy to get to on this very fast computer um, There's a small intestine cleanse playlist So my YouTube channel let's go there first You can find it. It's easy to find through my website. It's just Craig Lane and that's all it really says, 371 subscribers. So there's small intestine cleanse playlist. And that's what we're doing currently. There's an old playlist on there at the top. I have it sorted by the old ones are at the top and the new ones are at the bottom. It is a vitality test video there. Vitality test. You know, so we have a request now. I need to do a vitality test video. Because mm -hmm. I think that's a great idea. So uh, my videographer coach suggests doing pre made videos so next week i will have a vitality check video that will be three to five minutes long very short very concise and um, I don't, it won't be professionally edited yet but great love that my website in general um so the see the group cleanse how to there was a talk uh there was a part two we did last week went over some of the depths of cleansing and um and above that there are some great talks on cleansing in general and there's also PowerPoints available through the website that you can just ask me and I will send you the PowerPoints that are associated with these talks on the YouTube channel. Okay. And they're all free. And then a little more. Do you have a distinct difference in the videos that are for small intestine cleanse versus other forms of cleanse? Yes. Um, so we have a small intestine cleanse and that's for the fire element that's in the summer. We have a large intestine cleanse, um, the playlist. That's in the fall. That's coming up in October. That'll be the next cleanse in October. We have a water element cleanse after the holidays. As we call it a kidney adrenal uh, winter cleanse. And there's a video series for that, uh, a playlist. Then there's a liver cleanse, which is a wood element cleanse. In Generally, it's in March. And there's a playlist for that. All these cleanses are also on the website. You go to the cleansing purification tab, and you'll see all of them right there. I don't think they're all loaded with videos, though. Which would be a good idea at some point. Like, here was our winter wonders. We had a winter wonders one. And um, so that's all we have right now. But we can, fill, we can load those up. And please use the website. And please ask. Um, the website is a great contact page. You know, all requests are great. And lastly, lastly, you are offering more health circles than usual because COVID time is requiring that people boost our immunity. So we have multiple circles starting at different hours uh, of the day, weekend, weekdays, 
in person and only on Zoom, depending on what people want. And we would like them to go where in order to take advantage of this free service. Free service, there you go. So on the small intestine cleanse page, there's a calendar that you can, anybody can go to and there's a cleanse calendar there. So right now we're on, what's today? Friday the 14th. Ooh, we just missed the 13th by one day. So next week, for example, is the second week of cleansing. Wednesday night through the rest of the year, Wednesday nights from six to eight are food prep nights. I didn't have the Zoom room open last week because no one showed interest, but we'll have, generally have the Zoom room open like this. If you need some support with food prep, we can have you on this on a counter, like kind of like something where the computer's pointed down more against the counter and you can see food prep. And, um, and then every Friday night's community dinner. And these are free resources. Anybody can come even get the link. But generally I'm not posting the Zoom links publicly now for obvious reasons. There's been a lot of trouble with that. So if you want the Zoom link, um, you can join the cleansing group. You can ask to be on the newsletter. You can all, I'm always reachable, pretty much always reachable. And then um, as we're building this nutrition team too, then I'll be referring out to others and the team will expand and we'll be able to help more people in better ways. Wonderful. Um, and Monica is thinking about all the things that I never think about because I'm not a marketer and this is generally why. Thank you for your marketing expertise. And anything else, anybody? All right, we're going to stop share again. And we'll sign out with enjoy your cleansing. We're in the summer. Summer, the, the emotion of the summer, that's our birthright, is joy. That's part of the fire element. The downside of joy is sadness. And when there's too much joy, they call it mania. That's right, you can have too much joy in a dysfunctional way. I knew an alcoholic that way, so he had a blood sugar problem too. He would get on a, a manic phase and buy a new house and invest all of his money and his wife eventually left him because he couldn't control the mania, then the depression. He was suicidally depressed and then mania, then because suicidally depressed and then mania. he didn't know how to balance grief. He didn't know how to express grief yeah. and sadness. And expressing grief and sadness is something Americans run away from when it's really not that hard. So grief is a really great cleanse. And that's something mm. else we can do. We can have a grief group for those people who are grieving the loss of five months of their life. Uh, oh at my this God. point, so that they can get to the place where they could actually do some other health work. Wow. Yeah. Hear that, folks? There was um, a woman at Breath and Oneness. I forgot her name. She was leading grief groups. Um, Carla Brown does yoga groups, but there's also Hannah Dahlia and um, Dana Schlick. Dana, yeah, Dana was it. Yeah, Dana Schlick. Schlick. Yeah, They're, Dana was the I've one. Been on most of their grief weekends, they're astonishingly great. See, folks? Grief work, grief work going so on here in Santa Cruz. Beautiful and and so different than most people know. It's a remarkable amount of new information that can change anybody's spiritual life, physical life, emotional life, all of it. Yeah, folks. So come to one of our community dinners and find out more, or you can get in touch with grief and balancing your bipolar tendencies. <laughs> <laughs> and see, we're laughing, having a good time here. Health should be fun, folks. I have a saying. Healing healthy whole. Healing healthy whole because it, health means the same thing as yoga ultimately. Health means wholeness. Yoga means wholeness in the moment. Body, mind, spirit all merge in the moment. Kind of means the same thing to me as namaste. So when you're present, magic happens. <laughs>